Welcome to our service for Sunday the 22nd of November 2020. It's a different shape today. It's a service of hope and expectation called the Great O's and we have seven Bible readings hinged around an ancient version of the hymn O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. There are one or two old English words which I will seek to explain so I apologise in advance for those. We do normally try and make the services as accessible as possible. Anyway, I've wanted to do this service ever since Tim Stratford, who was a curate here many years ago, led it one Christmas time. And we get a chance to look through the whole sweep of biblical history at our salvation at this time of the year before Advent and before Christmas. So let's get started and welcome in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Great O's is a service of hope and expectation. And this celebration looks not to the past, but to the future. And its main emphasis is not on contrition or saying sorry for personal shortcoming, but on the proclamation of God's universal judgment. Together we say, Pour down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. We have sinned and become like one who is unclean. We have all withered like a leaf. Pour down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know me and believe me. I myself am the Lord, and none but I can deliver. What my hand holds, none can snatch away. Pour down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Comfort my people, comfort them, my salvation shall not be delayed. I have swept your offences away like a cloud. Fear not, for I will save you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Redeemer. Our God is a God of grace, mercy and love. Know that our sins have been forgiven. May we be strengthened in all goodness, since we have been raised with Christ let us seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come now to the ministry of the Word. Before each Bible reading, there'll be an O antiphon, or short sentence said by me. And then after each reading, please join in with us in singing a verse of the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Imagine we're stood around the piano. And a couple of words to clarify, nether, Old English for lowest, and Adonai, the Hebrew name for God. O wisdom, coming forth from the Most High, filling all creation and reigning to the ends of the earth, come, and teach us the way of truth. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The reading is from Proverbs chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths I was given birth, when there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth, before he made the world, or its fields, or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, and fixed securely the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. 
I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. of lords and ruler of the house of Israel you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai come with your outstretched arm and ransom us amen come Lord Jesus Exodus 3 beginning to read verse 1 now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to Luke, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations. Kings will keep silence before you, for whom the nations long. Come and save us, and delay no longer. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his root a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. 
He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut, you shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison and break down the walls of death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a seat of honour for the house of his father. O morning star, splendour of the light eternal, and bright sun of righteousness, come and bring light to those who dwell in darkness and walk in the shadow of death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The prophecy of one whose eye sees clearly, the prophecy of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of the, all the noisy boasters. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfil their desires. Cornerstone, binding all together, come and save the creature you fashioned from the dust of the earth. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. How awful that day will be.
no other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Desire of nations, show thy kingly reign on earth below. Thy cornerstone uniting all, restore the ruin of a fall. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O Emmanuel, our King and Lawgiver, hope of the nations and their Saviour, come and save us, O Lord our God. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, if you're able to, please stand for the Gospel reading. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to, to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophets. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. There is no talk as such this week since we have had such a feast of scripture but just to pick out one or two thoughts from this passage in Hebrews therefore the writer says since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken God's kingdom is the only one on this earth that cannot be shaken and we are receiving it as a gift so what is our response? Our response should be one of thankfulness. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably. Now what is the acceptable worship of the living God? 
the writer tells us, with reverence and awe. For, as C.S. Lewis says, he is a dangerous God. Our God is a consuming fire. Judgment is a reality, but so too is the grace and mercy of God at this time. So let us receive this kingdom with thankfulness, knowing that it cannot be shaken, and let us worship our God acceptably, with reverence and awe, for he is a consuming fire. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we bring before you our prayers today. Lord, thank you that we are secure in your kingdom that cannot be shaken. We offer you our whole selves, our hearts and minds and hands in worship to you, our all-consuming fire. We pray for the people of the world as they live through the horrors of war, famine, natural disaster and disease. We remember especially those countries blighted by the pandemic. Where there is despair, may your living hope flood in. We pray for the political leaders of our nation. May they show resilience and reason, strong leadership, sound judgment and clear example. Where there is authority, may your guidance be seen. We pray for local government leaders, for unity, respect and a willingness to work for the common good. Where there is influence, may your will be done. We pray for national and local church leadership. We pray especially for Rachel as she readies herself to start her ministry in St Helens. May your blessings fall on Rachel and Rob. We pray for all businesses and charities facing economic pressures due to the pandemic. We particularly think of those in this town. Where there is hopelessness, may your peace and hope enter in. We pray for the sick and all who care for them. Where there is suffering, may your healing touch be felt. We pray and give thanks for the news of the coronavirus vaccine development, with all the potential it brings, with the expectations and the hope that accompany this. We pray for all involved in this process and ask for your wisdom and grace in this situation. Where there is hope, may we be encouraged by you. Lord, thank you that we are secure in your kingdom that cannot be shaken. We offer you our whole selves, our hearts and minds and hands, in worship to you, our all-consuming fire. May your hand rest lightly on us in blessing. May your hands encircle us tightly in your care and protection. And may your hands push us gently out into the world. Amen. Lord, those see much spiritual darkness, we also see you reviving your church. Purify us, Lord, and cause us to be a blazing light among the nations. Oh, Lord, the clouds are gathering, the fire of judgment burns. You stand upon to see your laws of love so scorned and life so broken. Have mercy, Lord, forgive us, Lord, restore us, Lord, revive your church again. Let justice Yeah.
We're delighted that Reverend Rachel Shuttleworth will be licensed as team vicar on the 6th of December at three o'clock in the afternoon. Details of how to join this service online via Zoom will be available shortly. Please keep an eye on the church website and we look forward to welcoming Rachel and her husband Rob among us. In line with national restrictions, St Helens Parish Church PCC regrets to announce that the church building is closed for public worship and private prayer. This will be reviewed in early December. Our online services and gatherings continue and develop. Please keep an eye on our social media. Well, thank you to our seven Bible readers, Anne, June, Colin, Linda, Chris, Zandra and Debbie. Thank you to Emma for the prayers and to Derek, Jill and Nigel for the hymn. Lord our God, on the first day of creation you made the light that scatters all darkness. Let Christ, the light of lights, hidden from all eternity, shine at last on your people and free us from the darkness of sin. Fill our lives with good works as we go out to meet your Son, so that we may rejoice to welcome him at his coming. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. May God the Father, judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.